Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shay Quinn and I'm super excited for this video. I'm definitely branching out. My content um, this far has been definitely more like serious, um, more emotional. That is definitely part of who I am. Um, and the other part of me is actually, I love humor, I love laughing, I like making other people laugh. And um, so I wanted to try something a little bit different. So um, one of my all time favorite YouTubers is Danny Gonzalez. I'm gonna put his information here. You should definitely go check him out. And he is hilarious. Like I, he, he has more of like a commentary style that he does um, when he's like reviewing um, movie, different movies, different um, like funny videos or people. And he's just like a really good comedian. Like I really, really enjoy his content. And so, um, I'm hopefully I'll reach a Greg in this um, in this video. If you know, you know. If you don't, you gotta go check out Danny's stuff to figure it out. So I'm not trying to like impersonate Danny because I mean that would be impossible. He is genuinely one of the one of a kind. Um, but I did get inspired by his content, and I want to try my first. Um, commentary style um, on a movie. The movie we're gonna be watching today is Xenon, the 21st Century Girl. Wait, hold on, I don't know if I got that name right. Okay, I was a little off, hold on, let me try that one more time. Xenon, the girl of the 21st century. So what could be better than a 21st century gal, myself? Um, reviewing a movie about another 21st century girl. I don't know how this could go wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and watch it. Fun fact about me too, that um, I know some people may be watching know this, but maybe the majority of you don't. I have a deathly fear of space. And the funny thing about it is this movie's all about space. Um, so I don't know what the connection there is. If there's like a therapist or a psychiatrist out there who wants to analyze that for me, go for it. Um, but yeah, I grew up watching this movie. It came out in 1999. Um, and I just remember I would watch it all the time. I loved Xenon. I thought she was like the coolest 21st century girl. And not only the 20, the coolest 21st century girl, but like just the coolest girl in any century, really. I just was obsessed with her. So it starts out, you're just kind of like getting little glimpses of, it looks like a teenage girl's bedroom, right? In any other context, that would sound really weird. <laughs> um, and it's like you're seeing these kind of figurines, these, um, you know, like band posters, pretty much how my room looked like or what I wished it looked like back in the day. And then you see this um, back in the day, it looks like now an iPad, right? We can kind of, we have a name for it. But back in the day when I saw this as a little kid, I remember thinking, what is this? Like this, it's not quite a TV and she's like talking in it. And now it's funny looking back because it literally looks like an iPad and stuff that we see all the time. So I feel like um, that didn't age super well in the, in the shock factor that it did back in the day, um, but still pretty cool. Then you kind of start going, oh, okay, is that, is that Xenon? Is that her? Why is she talking in the screen? And then you realize it was her alarm clock. And I remember thinking, how cool is that? She's like waking herself up this way. Oh, Xenon, you are so cool. One other thing I wanna mention in, in this is I love the language that they use in here. Like, Cetus a penis. Whoever was like writing this really put a lot of effort into being like, okay, what would like the future slang be um, in, in 2045, I think is where when this is taking place. And I have to say, I'm all about it. Like Zetus Lapidus, I, I said that all the time as a kid because of this movie. So I just have to say the writing in this, top tier, beautiful. And then you get the big reveal. You think, oh, Xenon's just like a, a regular teenage girl like me. 
you know, she's just late for school, doesn't want to get up, totally can relate, but then... There's one thing to be thankful for. At least you don't live down there. Um, so yeah, she's a, she's not like your average teenage girl, maybe in the sense of like, yes, she goes to school, she has friends, but she lives in space. So that's when this, that's when that big news is revealed. So Xenon, your average girl that lives in space, you know, she's late to school, she has to go run and get breakfast, she gets to class just in the nick of time, and as she's sitting in class with um, a teacher that I would like to add, if this was in the future, why does he keep like glitching out? Like it's hard, to, <laughs> like you would think that they would have had that kind of um, like locked down by 2045 where he wouldn't be like pixelating and glitching out all the time. She's in class and then she finds out that her favorite band of all time, Microbe, um, can we just take a pause there for a second? Microbe? Like, how cool is that name? And not only is the band is the band name cool, but the lead singer name, you guys, you guys aren't gonna believe what his name is. Protozoa. Like, what? <laughs> so her favorite band she finds out in class is gonna be coming to her neck of the woods or um, region in space is a more accurate term <laughs> and actually perform a concert on the spaceship where she's living. So she's like so for, so psyched about it. She tells her best friend who happens to be Raven Simone, um, how cute is that? And they are so stoked. So they're telling all their friends, they're super, super excited about it. That, that will come in later. J just hang tight, don't worry. We will get back to Microbe and Protozoa. Um, sounds like I'm like trying to teach a science class. <laughs> So we get to find out that the reason why all these people are in space is because they're doing like this specific research and they need um, an like anti-gravity or gravity to not be present to like do their science experiments. So that's why they're there. So then they're all at lunch together. It's like the parents, the kids, they all have lunch together, I suppose. And the um, captain is telling the whole team there or all the people in the in the mess hall that Parker Wyndham, owner and chief operating officer of our parent company Wincom, will be paying our little space station a visit on Friday. And so the captain is like, you know, I'm hoping everybody's on their best behavior and then there's like this weird moment where he looks at Xenon because Xenon's a little crazy and kind of out of control and um yeah that part where they make eye contact like that it just like Something about that doesn't doesn't feel right, even if he is trying to send her a message. I, I didn't like that part. We found out that Xenon is kind of this like free spirit, kind of gets in trouble. Um, and so her parents have to kind of have a talk with her like, Xenon, this important dude is coming, you know, to, to see us. So we need you to be on your best behavior, okay? And she's kind of like, okay, guys, you know, whatever. I know that this is important. Um, but with a name like Xenon, you know that she's a free spirit. You know that she's, it's just a matter of time before she gets in trouble again because that's who she is. We also find out that her mom, um, and I'm assuming dad, lived at, lived on Earth before. So Xenon's like, you know, asking her mom like, yeah, that would really suck to have to go back to Earth, except she says it a little differently like this. You'd fully blow an O-ring if we had to return to Earth, huh, mom? I'm definitely gonna be stealing that line. Would you fully blow an O-ring right now if I tickled you? Yeah. Well, then Xenon's hanging out with her other friends, just kind of chilling in space, doing what what they do. In this scene, like all of her friends are like bad mouthing Earth, like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad we don't live there. They're like talking about all the germs and muggers and I've never even sneezed because obviously sneezing only happens in Earth on Earth, I guess. Then Xenon has this crazy idea to go look at the solar flare that was due. And of course, like all of the parents are like at this meeting, so they're not around. And so of course it would be a good time to go because- Better way to enjoy it with adult interference minor. So then Xenon and her buds go into this restricted zone, which her parents like specifically said, Xenon, be on your best behavior. You know, don't go into any restricted zones, but here she is. And she's in like this whole astronaut suit and she goes out into the space or into space like with a, like a string attached to her, not a string, 
That would be kind of scary. It's like a rope, a strong, it looked like a strong, strong, sturdy rope that was attached to her. So she could see like all these lights um, that were happening in space. And then, uh oh, her dad catches them and it is not good. Her parents then say like, Xenon, if you mess up one more time, we're going to have to ground you. Then her mom puts on this weird hat, which maybe it's like a stress reduction hat. I'm st I am mean, it looks, it looks pretty cool, like it might be helping. Um, and she tells Xenon, you know, if you mess up one more time, you're gonna be grounded. So you better watch yourself. The other thing that I noticed that's weird about watching these, like this movie again, is I remember when I watched it, the parents looked so old, like, oh my gosh, those parents look so old. And now that I'm watching it as an adult, it's like creepy going, like they don't look so old anymore. <laughs> so the other part that we find out here is that when um, Mike Robe, is, the, the boy band is coming up, they're doing this contest where you can submit like an entry or like, um, like an art project or something. Um, and the coolest one that they get um, you, the, the person who wins gets to like dance on stage with them. So of course Xenon's like, I want to dance with Protozoa. I mean, who wouldn't? And so she's making this like cool figurine, um, to hopefully enter it to win the contest. I just like how like in this movie, they always like end everything with minor or major, like you're a lunarious writer, Neb. I'm sure it was impressive major. And I'm guessing like when they're not as impressed, I bet that was impressive, like minor. Then the boss man gets up to the spaceship and um, Xenon was about to pull another Xenon move and she was about to go um, into a restricted area where she wasn't supposed to go. But she sees her parents walking around with this boss man and his like sidekick. And so she tries to make a good impression, you know, and goes up and says, Hi, I'm Xenon. I didn't mean to interrupt your tour, but I've heard so much about you and I fully couldn't wait to make your acquaintance. <laughs> So there's kind of like some weird energy going on where like Xenon, like uh, Mr. Wyndham, the boss man is kind of like shifty eyed and Xenon's kind of like, what's going on? Like kind of skeptical. But then he asks her like, you know, how um, she likes living in space. And of course she has like a super cool futuristic inspired answer. Life your very generous support has created for me and my rads is the most lunarious and interesting way any kid could hope to grow up. <laughs> the experiments, the research we get to watch, the amazing teamwork, the unique view of the universe. Thank you, Mr. Wyndham. Thank you. The kids are saying like, oh, this Mr. Wyndham, he's like such a cool dude. But then Xenon says that mm, he creeps her out. Um, but you know, in like space terms. The only thing that should be that smooth and oily is a propulsion module solar coil. Oh, snap. Oh boy, that, that dis. Mm, I'm gonna have to like write that down, practice it a lot of times, memorize it, and then I'll be able to use it the next time. So Xenon says that she has like this really creepy feeling, but Raven Simone, I, sorry, I don't know what her character's name is on here. I, I didn't quite catch it, but she's Raven Simone. Then she replies with, Sorry Z, but every time you get one of these feelings, it always ends up in disaster major. So then Xenon is of course in a restricted area because Xenon does what Xenon does. But then as she's leaving, she sees Mr. Wyndham's sidekick um, going into a restricted area also. And she's like, hmm, I thought I was the only one who went into restricted uh, areas. This is very unusual major. She ends up getting discovered by this ass the assistant guy and he's kind of like panicked like, you know, uh oh, he almost blew an o-ring there. So then he kind of makes up this excuse like, oh, I was hoping to get in here to work on some work and Xenon's like, mm, this wouldn't help you in here because this is like the memory bank for the whole ship, which I have a sneaking suspicion he knew that. All of Xenon and her friends are gathered gathered around to hear the winner of the microbe contest to see who will get to dance and sing with them when they come to the spaceship. So here's here's the result. I, I bet you can't even guess who it is. The winning entry in the dance with me contest is a 13 year old Xenon car. I won? 
I mean, yeah. Big surprise. Then she gets a code to go into the memory bank um, area, the restricted area. Again, what count are we on now, Xenon? And um, to spy on the um, assistant dude, because she knows he's up to something sketchy. And she sees him, like, entering in this information and in what I'm guessing is, like, a futuristic computer and he gets all of the information or this is what it looks like and puts it on this like little disc thing um so she's like hmm that's interesting but she gets locked in there and she gets caught then captain plank and her parent and xenon's parents are like you know why would you do that you're in big trouble and for her punishment <laughs> you guys aren't gonna believe this they're going to send her to a place that has tons of germs, uh, weather, and um, muggers. And I bet you can't guess where that is. Yeah, they're sending her to Earth. Ooh. And it's gonna suck major. They tell her that she's gonna go stay with her Aunt Judy for a while as a punishment. And me and Aunt Judy actually already have a lot in common. Aunt Judy, she hates space. Mr. Wyndham, while Xenon's packing up to go to Gross Earth, he says that everything has been amazing and he's going to actually pledge more money so they can all stay in space, which everyone's so stoked about. So this part's important. It, it sneaks in there and you don't think it's important, but it'll make more sense in the end. So her um, best friend, Raven Simone, found this um, disc thing and it looks very similar to the disc that the assistant used to get all that information. So she had found it and is giving it to Xenon as like a goodbye gift. Like, here it is. Here's your beautiful earring. It's just one. But um, have fun in Earth. Take it and remember me by it. So now Xenon's going to Earth. No longer um, a space space girl. I guess. I guess we're all technically space people because the Earth is in space, but. She's not living in the space of the space anymore. So of course, like the um, her friend had said, she had never sneezed because she had always been in space. I've never even sneezed. So of course, the first thing that happens to Xenon when she gets to this gross earth. Oh, you okay? You okay? Thank you, gravity. Then the Wind Mr. Wyndham's assistant sees the Xenon's cool new earring and he's like, <gasps> So I think that's gonna lead to something later. Just just hang tight. So Xenon's aunt, Aunt Judy, yep, the one who hates space, just like me, kindred spirits, I swear. She picks Xenon up and she's super excited to see her and they gotta go get some um, earth grub. It's probably not gonna be nearly as good as space food. When they get to the uh, restaurant, there's like these other group of kids there and um, they're like looking at the, her outfit like, you know, what do they say? <laughs> You don't see that every day. Who would want to? But I'm sorry, these kids have like no room to talk. You look at my dude's uh, shirt over here with like the triangles and like every color of brown that exists. And then, oh my gosh, the one next to him, it's like, it's like Jurassic Park skin or something. Ugh, that one's bad. The girl, I guess, is like all right, but it's I think mainly because the table's covering her, so I can't really fully see her outfit. And then the other guy who's chuckling, like I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> the the funny part is I feel like their outfits look more like spacesuits or space outfits than Xenon's does. And I'm trying to be unbiased. Like I know I've already established that I love Xenon and she's really cool, but like. I don't know. I, I feel like they don't really have room to talk. I remember like when I watched this, um, this guy, we're gonna find out, it, this guy, we're gonna find out his name in a minute, but I remember being like, he is so cute. He was also, I'll have to get the actor's name. Um, he was also in Toy Soldiers. Did anybody watch that movie? Maybe I'll, if this, if this review goes well and you guys want me to do another one, maybe I'll review Toy Soldiers and that would be a really funny one to do with Dylan. <laughs> I can't remember if I'm if I've made him watch that or not, but anyway, it's the same actor that's that's in that one, and I like had such a big crush on him, and I thought he was so cute, and I'm like, if only he would eye me like he does Xenon, like I love him. 
Okay, I can see her full outfit now and I want to confirm it's it's not good. So then they have this like altercation like, oh, your clothes suck, blah, 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 blah. When her Aunt Judy gets back from the bathroom, she's like, I'm out of here, let's go. So they, get, they make it back home to Aunt Judy's house. And then Xenon sees flowers and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm just a space girl, like what are flowers? And so I think, I think the earth is starting to grow on her. And um, so are flowers. No, I'm just kidding, that doesn't happen. So then we find out a little bit more backstory with Aunt Judy and apparently she's always been petrified of putting myself out there or taking a risk. And that's why she hasn't gotten married or kind of done a lot of things in her life. So Xenon has her first day of school and of course, all of those same kids that were at the restaurant that she just saw are in her class. I don't know exactly how that works. And then there's that eye contact again that I used to be like so envious of between her and I don't know what the actor's name is or what the guy's name is here, but we'll call him um, Cute Earth Boy. Between her and Cute Earth Boy. Mm. You see, you see what's happening. It's foreshadowing for sure. So Xenon's trying to figure out this you know, school earth um, environment, no glitchy teachers. They're actually like real life teachers. Um, they have swim class and um, apparently there's no pools in space and so Xenon doesn't know how to swim. So cute earth boy rescues her when she gets pushed into the pool by that mean girl. And it's a magic moment, I'll just say that. I thought you said you could swim. Yeah, in space. Oh, okay. I guess they do have pools in space and they and she can swim in space. Welcome to Earth. So then it's nice because Earth Boy kind of gives all of us a lesson on the Earth terms that they use. I kind of wish they would have done this in space. I feel like I would have had a much easier time adapting them and like actually using them in context. But um, maybe I'll try to use some of these like hip Earth Earth language now that Earth Boy's given us a lesson in it. No, no, no. Easy. Macro's a good thing. Micro is bad. Viral is nasty. Graphic is beautiful. So, macro is good. Micro is bad. Viral is nasty. And graphic is beautiful. Okay, let's see if we can use it at all um, in the rest of this movie in a normal sounding conversation. I'll see, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, Aunt Judy picks Xenon off, Xenon up from her first day of school and they get into her house and it is thrashed. Obviously somebody was there. I, I bet you can't guess who. <laughs> Um, was there looking for something very particular. It was a very viral situation. Viral is nasty. And then Xenon and Cute Earth Boy, they go live what was my like, I don't know, eight year old fantasy of riding a horse together. How beautiful, or should I say, how graphic. <laughs> Graphic is beautiful. So when they're at dinner, Xenon sees the assistant dude looking sketchy and, and you know, trying to find her. And so um, after dinner, they can't find him anywhere. And so uh, Cute Earth Boy is able to hack into the Wyndham financial system. Secret financial forms, confidential memos. You hacked your way into their internal data bank? Without breaking a sweat. And they find out that Wyndham's money, um, the company, it's been trending down and they're not looking too hot. And then they make the connection. You got it, you guessed it. That disc is the one that the assistant guy lost that Xenon's been wearing as an earring. Problem solved, they know what he's looking for now. Xenon's new friends, they're all trying to hack and hack in and see what's on this disc. Why does the Wyndham assistant guy want it? And somehow, this is actually a pretty crazy scene. Um, somehow, this little worm guy uh, gets into the computer. It's like a virus and like blows up the computer. So that's pretty crazy. What they find is it's actually this virus on the disc that um, they think that Wyndham is trying to use to put, to like destruct all of the systems within the spaceship. Um, so that way it like self-destructs. Luckily this genius though, he was able to find a way to like counteract it. I have managed to refashion this program into an undo file. 
that should remove the bugs from whatever system they've been introduced to. But the only way to test it is to actually test it on the spaceship and obviously they're on Earth. Welcome to Earth. And then a look who shows up. The one and only Mr. Wyndham's assistant. I, I still don't know his name. I should have probably been paying attention better. So then Xenon makes a deal with the assistant guy that she'll give him the disc back if she, if he can get her back to space. And I like here how like cute Earth boy he goes, write it, sign it. It's like, I, I don't think that's like binding. <laughs> like, but then the funniest part about it is then um, the assistant guy does this. And you have got squat. And like, so he's confirming that, oh yeah, luckily I, I got rid of the evidence because you could have taken me to the court with this little piece of paper and could have been bad for me, but now evidence is, is destroyed. As I, as many of us could have predicted, the assistant guy is sketchy and was like, yeah, I'm not taking you to space rips up the, or, you know, crinkles up the, um, non-binding agreement that they thought were by, that, that they thought would be binding and is like, I got the disc, I got what I wanted and I'm not getting you back to space. Of course she didn't give him the actual disc. Of course, Xenon would be a step ahead of that. She made her own disc, so it looked similar, but she didn't give him the disc with the information. She still has that. She just used some super cool space nail polish to recreate them so she could trick him. And then cute Earth Boy and Xenon are like having a moment and well, then this happens. <coughs> I'm, I'm so but then this happens. Dare to try again? No kissing. Then they find out that the only way to get to space is by hijacking Microbe's ship. Um, in case you forgot, Microbe is the super cool boy band that um, where Protozoa is the lead singer. And so they get into the Wyndham like industries uh, corporate offices um, where. Uh, protozoa and the microbe band are going to be leaving and Xenon has to get on with um, the ship so that way she can get back up to space because he's going there to perform the concert. And then we get to finally meet Protozoa. And can I just say that hair? Game over. Sorry about this, Mr. Zoa. We'll get her out of here at once. No. Wait a second. His name is... I thought like Protozoa was like all one name. Sorry about this, Mr. Zoa. So is his first name Proto, and then his last name is Zoa? <laughs> I don't know why I think that's so funny. <laughs> Mr. Zoa <laughs> makes the connection that Xenon's the winner of the, the contest because she made that cool like sculpture of him. And he's like, Gentlemen, you obviously don't know who this is. All we know is that we have orders to deliver to Mr. Wyndham. I don't think so, boys. So then Mr. Wyndham and the assistant and Aunt Judy somehow gets looped into this as well. Um, all get onto the same spaceship to try to get Xenon. Um, and they all are headed to space now. And I don't know if you remember, but Aunt Judy, she hates space. So she's kind of freaking out. Meanwhile in space, the spaceship is having some issues. There's there's a lot of system errors going on. People are freaking out. It's kind of like Titanic, but space form, I would say at this point, where it's the equivalent of sinking. I guess it's, it's continuing to float, but in not a good way. How ironic is that? It's not sinking, it's just gonna keep floating. Anyway, it's not looking good. But don't worry, Xenon, the girl of the 21st century, she's on her way. They all get there safe and Xenon's telling Captain Plank, like, you know, I have what it takes to, to save the ship. But don't think that's gonna stop Captain Plank from I and Aunt Judy. Mm -mm. There's, there's uh, some love connection going on there and it feels very strong. Who knew that by Aunt Judy facing her fear and going to space, She'd also find love. I mean, it's a beautiful story. And that's also how you know you're getting older is when you identify more with the grown-ups in a Disney Channel movie instead of the actual main like character. Xenon gets in just in the nick of time and she's able to save the spaceship. 
Go Xenon! Woohoo! And as for Wyndham and his assistant, they get arrested. And then, my favorite part of the whole movie. I am so excited. Microbe is uh, ready to do the concert now that the spaceship is, is saved and we get to hear Mr. Zoa, Protozoa, sing his song. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so excited for this right now. <laughs> Xenon being the coolest girl of the 21st century, since she already had spent like a ton of time with Mr. Zoa and the Microbe crew, um, she wanted to have her BFF Raven Simone dance with him instead of her. She's so, she's so cool. Why is she so cool? So, she's asked me to do two things for her. Number one, she'd like me to dedicate this next song to a very lucky guy named Greg. Wait a second. Cute Earth Boy's name is Greg? Wait, wait a second. I swear I did not know that. Is this meant to be? Danny, if you are watching this, I, th I think this is a sign. His name is Greg. Cute Earth Boy's name is Greg. All of the Gregs, if, if you don't watch Danny Gonzalez, you won't understand this part. But if you do, like, please get this over to Danny. Like, this is a sign, you guys. I'm shook. I, I swear I did not know that at all. Maybe like deep down inside of my soul, like in, in my past memories, but not until right now. I didn't know that cute earth boy was Greg. No wonder why I loved him and I also love Danny now. It all makes sense. I remember this like so vividly. I'm so excited. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Stargazing mega fast, you hit me like a cosmic blast, giving me a technicolor world, world, world. Putting me in overdrive, speed of light, I'm so alive. Could you be my supernova girl? Interplanetary, mega stellar, hydrostatic, there's no gravity between us. Our love is automatic. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Make my heart go boom, boom. My supernova girl, boom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Make my heart go boom, boom. My supernova girl. All is well. All is macro, actually, in, in this case here. Macro's a good thing. That has stood the test of time for me. Like, that was a stellar movie. It was macro. It was graphic. <laughs> It makes it sound like it was like a war movie. <laughs> no, but for real, like, I still love it after all these years. Especially that song. I mean, I, like, can we make it a comeback? I, it's so good. Anyway, I'm still a bit creeped out about that whole Greg situation. Um, comment below, share this with Danny. I don't know how he infiltrated this, but he has proved to be powerful and and it's coming through again. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Be well, I'll see you in my next video. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Stargazing mega fast, you hit me like a cosmic blast, giving me a technicolor world, world, world. Putting me in overdrive, speed of light, I'm so alive. Could you be my supernova girl? Interplanetary, mega stellar, hydrostatic, there's no gravity between us. Our love is automatic. Zoom, 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 make my heart go boom, boom, my supernova girl, boom, zoom, 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 make my heart go boom, boom, my supernova girl.